happened those things and I, and I got a thirst for the word and then my grandfather um, he would give us a scripture and we had to study that scripture and we had to expound on the scripture and then we had to do a presentation in our home on that scripture and he said it's not just teaching us how to understand the word of God it is not just developing a relationship, but it teaches you how to present the word of God to others. Mm -hmm. And because of that being in me from my foundation, I just fell in love with Jesus. And every time I share Jesus, I fall in love with him more and more over and over again. Now, yeah. now I, and I notice um, in your your ministry, and, I, and I'm feeling it from the Holy Spirit, that there has been some frustrations. Oh, definitely some disappointments definitely um in your walk definitely how do you uh evangelist t deal with those distractions or oh, I, I may have given it away but deal with those frustrations and those um, uh, distractions i i was blessed to be mentored by gertrude ribbons and one of the last conversations that she had with me before the lord called her home she said baby don't focus on being a preacher because mm. everybody doesn't appreciate a female mouth. She said, but drop the P and tell them to call your reacher. And so if you can reach from the pulpit, reach. If you can reach from the floor, reach. If you got to stand on the street corner and reach, always be a reacher. Mm. And then my great grandmother told me, whatever you do, you do it well and you do it unto the Lord. And if you have to be a honey dipper, mm -hmm. be the best honey dipper that there is. And I didn't know what honey dipper was. I mean, you would think that that is an honorable mm -hmm. profession, mm -hmm. honey, dipper, honey dipper. But it was a person that cleaned outhouses. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so, in other words, whatever you do, you do it well. You do it unto excellency and you do it unto the Lord. And so, in the frustrations, in the distractions, um, I find that I can go to my closet. Yes. And my closet, now that I'm older, is in my car in the driveway of my home. And just have my time with God. And I focus on the words of my great grandmother and the words of Gertrude Ribbon. And I'm just a reacher. Now, you have two handsome gentlemen in this <laughs> studio with you. I don't think they're bodyguards. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're bodyguards. I, uh, I, I think you introduced them as, as funeral home uh, owners. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we get into your, your business, I definitely want to talk about it a little bit. They're supporting you yes. in in this event you have coming up. Yes. Uh, pieces to piece. Yes. Tell us uh, about that event. Well, pieces are fragmented parts of our hearts that are thrown and spewed all over, not just this city, but over this nation. I don't know why violence is at a all time high. Mm. I don't know why Cleveland has turned into Pakistan. Mm. But I do know that God can take pieces and transform them into peace. It has to start with prayer. Not denominations. Not pointing fingers. But just knowing who God is and understanding the power that will come forth when we come on one accord to do one thing. And that is to lift up his name. So that he can bring peace to the pieces. And the awesome thing about that is, no, we can't save everybody. No, we won't be able to save everyone. But God blessed me to cross paths with Eric J. Williams, the son. And in crossing paths with Eric, we just began to talk. And he saw me as I did a funeral home, a funeral at his funeral home for someone who had lost a loved one to violence. And he came up to me afterwards and said, Thank you for the service you provided. And if you ever need anything, I'm here. Amen. And then he said, give me your card. Because if I have families that need someone like you, I'm going to have them call you. And then I said, give me your card. Because okay. <laughs> if I have families, right, and so right, we just, right. you know, and we developed an awesome relationship. And I am proud to say that he has been a man of his word. I have sent families to him that had no money. They had, yo, money, yo, can you give me a dollar? Yo, can you give me five? Yo, can you give me ten? Right, right. And he gave them service of celebration for their loved one, fit for a king or a queen. Now, let me ask you, uh, Eric. Um, you've been, you and, 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 and your dad, uh, Aaron, correct, have been in this business how long? I've been in this business for 11 years. 11 years? 11 years. And for you to... Uh, 
give your services away? Do you really give them away? You know. How can you make money giving them away? Sometimes it's not about the money. Sometimes you just let God use you. This Amen. has actually has been my uh, my ministry of what I can do since I'm a, I'm a funeral director and embalmer. Okay. So I cut out all costs. So if I do it myself, the only cost is my time. So if I'm able to help somebody out or um, help a child that's passed or died, um, um, I do. Okay. And, and I, I let the spirit work on me because if I think you're trying to play me, then right. I'm just bag up. You bag up a little bit. I, right. Now, 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 Aaron, you tell me about this uh, funeral home business. Is this guy giving? He's doing all the services for free. <laughs> well, What's going on here? <laughs> we talked about that too. But he has such a big heart. And just like we was talking this morning, I brought to his attention, I had seen his sign. I couldn't remember exactly where I seen it at. It said, Free Phillips. Mm. My God. But the Philip is God. Yeah. My God. My God is free. Woo! And this is a conversation we had this morning. Mm -hmm. And then while I was eating breakfast, it was brought up, well, how you all doing in blase blase? So we say, look here. Sometimes I have to do what we have to do because everybody don't have it. And this fellow brought to our attention said, well, it's going to come back at you many times more. You better say right. that. Right. That's right. true. You say, That's true. you eat, your family will eat. And your offsprings and anyone else who you can help. Amen. You know, being um, uh, an embalmer and a funeral home director, it, it, it has to be a relationship with God like none other. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely is. You know, when I first, um, about my third year in the business, I actually moved to Pittsburgh for a job. He Actually, a guy came and found me from Cleveland. He drove here with his family to see where I was at and said, I want to offer you a job. And I actually I moved to Pittsburgh. And uh, when I got there, my family was still here. And I said, Eric, what are you doing? What are you doing in Pittsburgh at that? I always said I never was going to move to Pittsburgh. Right. Come from Cleveland. <laughs> um, but then I said, you know, um, I said, God, if you, if, you, if you want me to be here, then I'll be here and I'll stay here and I'll just do what I can do. So um, I had a case and it was a bad motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. um, um, they said he was unviewable, but when you come by me, it's always viewable. Um, so as I um, I seen two ladies leaving the church and they came to me and said you know what God said this is for you and you just need to be here mm -hmm. and I said amen so that was my confirmation um, on what I need to do um, I definitely just um, got the feeling uh, from God once I got back to Cleveland uh, what I need to do as far as myself and, and my services that even if I do decide that I want to give my services away for free sometimes um, that I know that God will take care of me and my family because he has I, you know you're looking at somebody who didn't have anything um, who was catching the bus going to work for somebody else's funeral home Amen. and then once I realized that um, I was making them all of the money I said well if I can just get one a month hmm. I'll be good because they wasn't paying me anything oh wow um, so um, once I did that and I had the ability to open up myself, I said, well, I'll be a blessing to others as God bless me. So Amen. that's what I'm doing. Well, you know, uh, Evangelist T, you have met some really fine, fine gentlemen uh, to help you support this uh, piece to pieces. Tell us more about this and when can we go out to uh, fellowship with you all and dates and times? And pieces to Peace is what God gave me two Tuesdays ago. Um, I have a heart for God's people, and as an intercessor, I'm always praying, even when the city is sleeping. And God put it in my spirit that it is praying time. It's not time for pastors or ministers or prophets or apostles to come and shine their titles. It's about we just coming together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Uniting in the atmosphere. Because, see, Satan is the prince of the air. Even though God gives him permission to do what he does, he's still the prince of his, the air. Right. He doesn't have a problem interrupting our agenda or disrupting or dismantling our schedule. So why are we right. not coming up into his face with the authority that God has given us and decreeing and declaring that we will not have no more in the city and in this nation? Amen. And so we are meeting tomorrow, my God from Zion, <laughs> at 7 o'clock. 
at Willard Park. It's on the corner of East 9th and Lakeside, right where the free stamp is. Just to simply pray. We're going to pray for you. Pray for unity. and Pray for the fathers. Pray for the mothers. Pray for our youth. Pray for the government and our spiritual leaders because it takes all of us working collectively and cohesively together to save not just our children, but to bring restoration to our families. It does take a village. Okay, and so each one, don't just teach one, but reach one. We want to say that, that we are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. And the cattle on a thousand hills is hard to claim. But when it comes to doing the work, then we want to be afraid. But the word of God also says, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and of a sound mind. And so I'm coming with a sound mind, exercising my righteous power and my spiritual authority to shift, to shake, dismantle, and destroy the assignment that Satan thinks he has and will come to pass in this nation and in this city. It will stop in the name of Jesus. No. <laughs> you know, you got loud and everything. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but, but don't you think that, you know, those pastors and those bishops and those apostles that come together, aren't they doing their part in I never said they the weren't, and we will have some. Okay. I am just a vehicle. Matter of fact, I made sure that I'm not praying tomorrow okay. because I've been covering them. That's why I was under attack yesterday. That's why I ended up in a hospital. Yeah, I understand the spiritual attack, but everybody has to do their part. The word says we are many members of one body, right, right. and the problem is we sit back and we wait for everybody else to do the job mm -hmm. but we want to benefit and reap the reward and so I didn't look at that I was a woman I didn't look at that I'm a widow I didn't look at that I don't have the money I just said okay God if that's what you told me to do I will do it and I simply shared it with Eric on his birthday as I'm wishing him a happy birthday <laughs> and he said well let's do it just that simple just and he's the sponsor he took care of the flyers I designed them I thank Rob Frostbite for, for, for putting it together putting my vision together on that flyer donating his time and his services Eric for just funding the effort to, to purchase the flyers and then helping me market the event. Um, I thank the community for embracing the event. Um, and of course, it, it takes us all. It takes us all. Amen. And it does take us all. And I, and I think that's what's so, so, so important, uh, Eric and, and, and Mr. Williams, that we work together. Right. Together. Everybody has a role to play. Right. Together. Right together mm -hmm. and and speaking of working together mm -hmm. are you guys going to be out there too on at Willard Park of course of course um, that's why we actually kind of I kind of persuaded Tanya to go yeah. on Wednesday okay because I have that's prayer. A that's a slow day um, and I have church on Tuesday and Thursday so I still want to be able to do what I need to do in God's house along with going out with evangelist T and evangelize and pray Amen. Um, for the community. And what church uh, are, are you? Uh, New Spirit from? Revival Center. Oh, Pastors, Dr. 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 Dale and Dale Melinda, Melinda Scott. Scott. Yeah, Dr. Gerald just was advising Donald Trump on how to <laughs> right. deal with the spiritual community. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I have my thoughts on that, but we think that's a great thing that he was at least invited to come and, 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 and right. share. Right, exactly. I hope Donald is sincere in his in his efforts. You know, We all do. Great men and women of God together. I hope he's not taking it lightly. Maybe mm -hmm. he'll change some of his... Yeah. His views after they get done with them. right, but you know it's just you know just as uh, God say you know it's what you're letting your ear gates. Yes. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we can get the word into his ears, Amen. even if he he if he isn't that way. Hopefully that you know my pastor and other pastors have persuaded him to think differently. Yeah. I mean it's just like a a, a worldly person, somebody in the streets. As long as you can get somebody in their ear, right, they'll change their thoughts and um, have better ways. Amen, amen. Because that is what's truly truly needed in our community today is to hear what what evangelist t has to say mm -hmm. and the others that's coming together this next wednesday this wednesday this tomorrow. Wednesday. tomorrow is to um hear about the goodness mm -hmm. of jesus christ and how he can change your mm -hmm. life and i think people are getting hungry for the truth mm -hmm. i mean I, I think they really want to see a change mm -hmm. uh, but the enemy is just Whoever he can convince mm -hmm. to pull that trigger, mm -hmm. he's just 
<laughs> He's just calling out all stops, and we need to call all stops. That's, that's true. Let me let me also mention this: when you said it takes us all working together, um, big shout out to my pastor Dwayne Simmons mm -hmm. from Mount yeah. Pleasant because tomorrow kicks off our fall revival, and my pastor understands I'm an evangelist. My work is in the streets, and he completely supports me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying it's one one revival in two locations. Mm -hmm. We will have some in the church, the building, mm -hmm. and we will have some in the community, the church, mm -hmm. right. in the atmosphere. And so I thank God for that. Um, but also, it's not just ministers and, 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 and pastors and bishops coming together. Um, I have a young man. Well, I have the Alphas and the Omegas and New Faisada. They're, they're coming to support as well. But I have a young man, LaRon Scooby Douglas, who... Scooby Douglas. Yes. yes. He, he, he was in. He, he actually, his, his wife is, is um, and they are both members of my husband's, my late husband's father's. Um, and Mother's Church, um, Bishop and, he, and Bishops Elena and Richard Williams, but but he was shot up while being in a in, in a gang, mm. and he said, "When I get better, I'm going to kill the person that did this to me." And he did just that, and he served a couple decades in prison, but he's come out and he turned his pieces into peace. And he has an awesome gang mentoring program called Renounce and Denounce. And he is going to be one of the speakers tomorrow. And then I have a young lady. Her name is Sandra Morton. She's the CEO of God's Gift Center. And what she does is mentor young ladies. And she teaches them about self-respect and self-pride. But she gives them opportunities that might not have been afforded to them. She shows them how to build a computer and rebuild a computer. And then allows them to take that computer. She teaches them baking skills and life skills. As a matter of fact, one of the young ladies that learned how to bake and decorate cakes, her mother ended up getting married and she did her mother's wedding cake. Amen. And so we're having people that are busy and visible into the, in the community but not be, might not be visible to you or mm -hmm. I. Right. And so this is also a networking opportunity because after we pray, then what? Amen. Well, Evangelist T, what? Well, glad you asked. So what we're going to do, we're going to start having some raw talk forums where we follow up um, and, and sit down and give them the tools to become viable citizens and residents of where they live and, they, and, 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 and cause and effect change in the communities that they come from. We, we want to point at the children, but what are we doing as the caregivers mm -hmm. of the children? You know, some mother might be doing the best she can, and there is such thing as the working poor. Right. And and you can make one or two dollars too much and you can't get the subsidy that is allotted and provided for someone else. And so you have to go to work and you have to trust that your child is going to be safe at home. And unfortunately, the streets sometimes come in those little cracks. Now, now speaking of the streets, where was your son raised? Where was he uh, <laughs> raised? In the Glenville area. The Glenville area? Yes. The Glenville, okay. I'm very familiar with the Glenville area. What did you do? What did I do? To keep him from dealing drugs and getting involved <laughs> in all the things that were easily accessible to him in the streets that he turned out to be such a fine young man. <laughs> what I did when I wasn't able to be there, his mother and my mother stepped in and gave me the best man I could ever have besides God. Yes, yes. And he turned out to be real good. He didn't he? Yes, he did. Amen. He didn't he? And I've learned from many years ago in reading the Bible that God says if you love me hmm. I will bless your generations I you know like thousand generations mm -hmm. if, if you love me but if you don't love me he'll put a, a curse, curse on him. them and, and that's what we call that that, Generation. that generational mm -hmm. curse that seems mm -hmm. to follow yes uh, our children and I thank God that that my grandmother and granddad and everyone really loved Jesus mm -hmm. and allowed me to just glean mm -hmm. from 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 that love. Well, I'm excited for you guys, especially uh, uh, you evangelist T, because I I really admire your work. I've I've been following you a while now on on Facebook and uh, you know the, what I do is I see somebody seems to be genuine and. 
and doing the Lord's work. I'm gonna invite them on the Amen. I'm gonna invite them on K A Z on social media just mm -hmm. to get them out there a little little bit more and share mm -hmm. with them. And we want to share this again on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, right. yeah. seven o'clock. And how long is this is going? To, how long are we going to be out there in that beautiful weather tomorrow? From seven to nine, and everybody dress warm because it's going to be a little chilly. Okay. And please bring a blanket or or lawn chair because we do want you to be comfortable okay. as well. But just come with a heart just made up and a mind made up to cause and effect change through the Spirit of God. Are we going to have any musicians out there? Um, this is, this, is, this is not a program. This is about prayer. This is just strictly and about prayer. And back in the day, they came and prayed and they sung old hymns. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take it back to our basics. It's not about showtime. No showtime. It's, it's not about being flamboyant. No flamboyant. It's not about being cute. Not being cute. No. It's about just food. about, it's about mm -hmm. Jesus. You going to be some food there? It, yes, and spiritual food. Oh, spiritual. taste and see. Yes. <laughs> taste and see that the Lord is here. Yes, Auntie. Yes, Auntie. Auntie. Yes. Auntie. Yes. Auntie. Yes. Auntie. Yes. Auntie. Yes. Auntie. No. That's all right. So this is truly about praying and praising God at the freedom. Is. The freedom stamp is there. It's, it's back. The right. freedom is exactly. The Lord is gone for a while. It was, but it's back. Amen. Because when the Lord set free, it's free. It's free indeed. And we can, and as good parents, we can still birth all the right things in our child. Yes. But our children still make that final choice. Yes. And the awesome thing about God is that no matter how much you've veered off your course, when you got the right GPS, the God protective services guiding your life, mm -hmm. no matter how often he recalculates and recalculates and recalculates your footsteps, you will always end at the final destination. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says he has a plan for us. Amen. And so sometimes we have to go through potholes and bumps and, and have some accidents and get incarcerated right. so that God can get the glory from the testimony. Amen. 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 And Eric, mm -hmm. want to just be sure we, 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 we get an idea of, of how to get in contact yes, with you. Definitely. Why don't you share that with our audience? Well, you can reach Eric J. Williams Funeral Homes, um, 125 19 Buckeye Road. You can give us a call, 216-618-0990. Or you can just go on the website, upscalefuneral.com, and we'll take care of whatever needs we need to get take care of. And we leave no one behind as long as we come to a good agreement. Um, we'll take care of it. Amen. And you do it from the beginning to the end? Mm -hmm. the yes. Whole, the whole the yes. Whole bag, huh? Yes. And if, and if he can, when he quotes a price, that is the price. I, I, yeah. When if whatever he says, he doesn't come back with hidden fees or right. this came no fluctuations. Up. It is what it is. It is what it is, and it's always quality, and it's always a fond memory. Always. Always. Um, always put that you know you don't have to just because you don't have any money doesn't mean I have to take away the service it's just a product that you're going to buy is a little less expensive right. but the service is still the same regardless if you pick out something that's twenty thousand dollars or two thousand dollars we're right. still going to take care of you oh that, well that's that is that is a truly of a blessing and uh you're in the Buckeye area yes and uh that's one two five one nine Buckeye yes so is, this is the actual place they they yes this is where the funerals and things take place yes viewings and, and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and, and for those that uh, don't have a pastor or, 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 or don't you provide them with someone that can help them in those areas as well <laughs> amen amen well uh, sister do you have any last words that you want to say to our audience before we skit and skedaddle I want to speak to um, bereaved spirits and bereaved hearts I want to speak to the mindset of chaos and confusion right now and I just want somebody to know that God can take your pieces and turn them into peace. Everything that God calls us to is not pretty. God had me marry a man that had AIDS, and I'm not infected. But I was able to stand by him until death. And it wasn't AIDS that took him, it was cancer. And just like God mended the pieces of my broken heart, he can do the same for you and for this city. I know four young people that I've mentored that have been murdered. In the last two months I have a cousin that was murdered in Pennsylvania and we're going through that I did her eulogy this year that's how I brought my January in but again God can take your pieces and turn them into peace so if you haven't given him your life today I ask that you do you can't get it all together but with God he will help you get you together mm -hmm. trust him 
Rely on him and adhere to his word. And you will not be a victim. You will be a victor. Amen. Amen. And on that note, I just want to say, I love you. Jesus loves you. And there's nothing, nothing you, you can, can do, do about, about it. it. Until next time. Amen. Excellent, guys. Excellent, excellent. Very good, very good, very good. Excellent. Thanks, fellas. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Mm-hmm. More than welcome. It's an honor. I felt like I was on the set. Uh, yeah. Hi. Camera action, right? Yeah. You gotta have lights. You do a good job. Yeah. Yes, you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm, thank you so very much. Okay. Let me make sure this gets loaded up onto.